The first rule of success is to have a vision. If you want something, if you have a passion in your heart, fire in your belly, it's gonna be you. I think what might have been worthwhile to explain to myself at 20 is to recognize that every single person you meet is struggling. My impact would be people learn from me in a way that they are empowered by what I taught them. You're sitting at home and freaking, obviously it's you. It's only going to be you because outside motivation can only last for so long. Listen to me, once you realize who you are, you stop operating in desperation. Look at how amazing it is that entropy and evolution can combine together to yield these kinds of cogitating structures that only exist on the cosmic timeline for a mere moment, but we are that moment. If you do feel that maybe something has enlightened you a little bit, or if you've had a thought that most people have, have not, do you just have a secret smile? Or do you, do you try and maybe share it with someone you love or write it down or take a picture? I want to teach you how to think about the world. And then you say, I have a new way to understand the world. And you just run off, you don't, you don't even look back. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go, and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. This means you can do what I've done. You can have this life. You can be happy in your career and your family. So here's my big problem with a lot of y'all, is your belief system is off. And if you want the world to know your name, well then I applaud you. I really do, the world needs you. Any of us, I think, should want the world to be a little better off for you having lived in it. And I, I think shared understanding is, is what empowers us more than anything. So that's rule number one, have a vision. Rule number two is don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the naysayers. Everything I ever did, the thing that they heard out of people's mouth was, that's impossible. That can't be done. Or no. That is exactly what I heard. And of course, I proved to the people that it can't be done. So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. And when they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. I'm a strong believer of what Nelson Mandela said, that everything is always impossible until someone does it. Well, I'm going to be the one, I said to myself, I'm going to do it and I'm going to show it to them. Maybe it has never been done before. That's perfectly fine with me. But I'm going to do it. And I did not listen to the naysayers. It's all about the hard work that you put in. I said to myself, in bodybuilding, I worked out five, six hours a day. I'm going to do the same thing now for acting. And of course, I went to college to study English. I studied the accent removal, acting classes, and all of this stuff all day long. I worked and I worked and I worked. And within a short period of time, I made one movie called Hercules in New York, which of course went right into the toilet. But it didn't discourage me. I still had the same vision. And then all of a sudden I did Streets of San Francisco. I did Stay Hungry and Pumping Iron and The Villain. And then all of a sudden I was asked by Dino De Laurentiis and by Universal Studio to star in Conan the Barbarian. And after I did Conan the Barbarian, the director at the press conference said to the press, the director was John Milius. He said to the press, if we wouldn't have had Arnold, we would have had to build one. So think about that. The very body that they said can never be sold because the time is wrong. A few years later, I'm doing Conan the Barbarian and it was the number one hit at the box office when it came out in the summer of 82. Think about that. And the director says, if we wouldn't have had his body, we would have had to build one. So all of a sudden, 
My body became an asset, not a liability. And the same thing was with Terminator. After we were finished filming Terminator, Jim Cameron said to the press, if Arnold wouldn't have had that accent and talked like a machine, I think the movie wouldn't have worked. So think about that. The body and the accent that they attacked was an asset. But I didn't listen to those losers. I didn't listen to them at all. It's just the reality of it is, is that you cannot listen to the naysayers. So it's a very important lesson for all of you. So when someone says, no, this is a stupid idea, you in your mind, you don't have to say it, but in your mind, just say this of you, you asshole. What do you know? Listen to me, once you realize who you are, you stop operating in desperation. You stop saying yes to stuff you ain't supposed to be saying yes to. So here's my big problem with a lot of y'all is your belief system is off. Like everybody can see how sweet you are. People are commenting on well, you could do this and you could do that. And you the only one ain't caught up with it yet. Gee, why you always on beast mode? I'm shocked more people are on beast mode. There are people who live from check to check and they comfortable. It's the weirdest thing to me. I'm like, boo, you broke. And you broke on several levels. We're not talking about Sally Mae, you still owe your grandma I'm talking about. You need to cash your grandma out. Listen to me, unless you number one in your industry, you shouldn't be chilling. And if you number one in your industry, you got enough common sense to know you better not be chilling. Every single day of my life, I feel like giving a hundred and twenty. Every single day. Somebody said yesterday, E.T., you gave 120. What you gonna do tomorrow? I said, I don't know. Give 140. I don't know, but I don't have days where I don't feel like it. Why? Because I'm counting on me. My wife's counting on me. My son's counting on me. I don't have days to waste. There's nothing wrong with the opportunity. You're not giving 120. You're giving 70. You're giving 60. You're giving 50. And you want what these people who've given sweat, who's given blood, who's given tears, you want what they paid for and it ain't free. You don't belong at the bottom and it's time for you to get your butt from down there. It's time for you to stop being comfortable at the bottom. Get your butt up and get to where you're supposed to be. The Bible says he was in a pig pen and he came to himself and he went home. Get your butt up. You are a royal priesthood. Get where you belong. Do what you're supposed to do. Live like you're supposed to live. You got all the stuff. You got, you got it all. But you will not outwork me because your height has nothing to do with my work ethic. Your face has nothing to do with my work ethic. Your two-parent background has nothing to do with my work ethic. You will not outwork me. On your jet, you will not outwork me. In your Bentley, you will not outwork me. You will not outwork me. Get up. Act like you're playing basketball. Act like you're playing football. Compete. That's what bothers me. Many of y'all are not competing. I need effort. Compete. Go to class. I just left the school telling these kids, act like you're playing football. Go in that doggone classroom. Compete. Many of you have lost your competitive edge. Get your competitive edge back. I'm not against no other motivational speaker. I'm just competitive. Some of you are not successful because every single time you run up against a trial, every time you run up against a tribulation, you stop and you cut off beast mode. And what I'm here to tell you is, if you tell that thing, I'm here just like you here. And I promise you, I ain't leaving without the degree. I ain't leaving. I will not leave without that goal. I will not leave without that dream. I will not leave this opportunity. I get it. Why is it so important to get up early? Some of y'all don't want it. That's why you ain't got it. I don't sleep when I'm tired. I sleep when I'm done. The average millionaire wakes up at 4 a.m. So it started off four o'clock in the morning where I'd start and I'd start with my cardio, then I'd have breakfast, and then I would go to the gym, and then I'd go to work. Some of y'all have no idea what 4 a.m. looks like. Why would you not wake up at 4.30? Because you're too busy sleeping in. I'm pretty sure I wake up earlier than all of you. We don't sleep when we're tired, we sleep when we are... Ah. Too busy 
hitting the snooze button multiple times. Excuses sound best to the person that's making them up. And if we can really be honest, some of y'all don't even go to bed until about 4 a.m. If you can get up before the rest of the world is awake, right? Before the enemy is awake, you can get so much done. You're so much more productive. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Wake your ass up. And then they ask me, well, why are you up so early? <laughs> <laughs> Take responsibility to make your life happen. Awaken the beast inside. Wake up at 4 a.m. So I begin to tell myself, there must be a reason. When you have something to do, when you have someone to love, when you have something to look forward to, when you get up in the morning, see people who have something to look forward to don't need an alarm clock because they have a reason for being. You, if you want to have one of the best lives in the world, which is you live on your terms, you have to pay your dues to get there. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life, determine who you become. You got a problem with your life. You got a problem with your environment. Do something about it. If you want more freedom in your life, you have to have more discipline. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. You decided that you're not going to go through life being a whiner, being a complainer, that you're going to take responsibility for what it is that you want to create. The greatest ability that God has given humankind above the animals is the ability to choose. You can read about a spacewalk or watch a movie of a spacewalk and you sort of get a sense of it. And then when you're on board a spaceship and you're floating weightless by the window, especially a way of one bulging window, the cupola, so you can almost freely look around in, in 180 degrees, you get some sense of where you actually are. But the day that you, for real, are going to be on the other side of that window and, and you, you're going to assume the danger of it, you're going to put on this, build this spacesuit around your body and then go into a tiny bit of the ship and close a hatch behind you. You're going to become a torpedo and then take all the air out of that little part you're in and then open up the hatch and now actually physically pull yourself on the outside of the ship. That's entirely different. I spent my whole life visualizing it, dreaming about it, talking to guys who've done it, and then training in virtual reality, training underwater. But suddenly, the part of your body that's in the sun is plus 150 Celsius, and you feel the searing heat of that. And the part of you that's in the shade is minus 140 Celsius. And so when your legs touch the, the, the fabric of the inflated suit, it's, it's like... Uh, growing up on a farm with super cold metal on a stovepipe and you don't want to let it touch your skin because it's so uh, searingly cold and you feel the environment that you're in and the world is silently you can see an entire face of the whole planet uh, right across a continent and it's right there beside you and it's silently turning and the whole universe is right here and you're you're in the middle holding on with one hand it's extremely visceral and physical and personal and intimate to be in the world uh, that way. I've been hugely lucky and I think we collectively uh, are more liable to make good decisions for ourselves and for where we live the more clearly we can see the whole thing as, as one place. And you started posting these pictures on a whim really, taking these beautiful photographs from up in space because you see so many. Well, picture what it's like. You're there yeah. with a the camera and you're going around the world <laughs> and you float over to the window and you say, I'm not even going to take a picture today. It's I just want to look at the world. And you're looking at something you go, holy, and you you, you got to grab the camera because there's there's your your emotions are trapped behind you. You can't keep up. And you go, I got to take a picture of this so I can look at it later. Responsibility that comes with, with being trusted with being an astronaut, I think, uh, 
uh, it's been delightful to see the effect of it. I, I mean, I took, I think, 45,000 pictures over my three space flights. And after a year I got back from landing, I was like, what are we going to do with all those photos? I mean, do we just let them sit in a file? I thought, why don't we take the best and put them in a book and, and then put why each picture meant something to me. This is just a sharing of the experience and, and let people then maybe see the world for what it truly is, or, or at least a slightly clearer view or a more complete perspective rich view of the world. And then just like me as a nine-year-old boy, maybe they will then be a slightly different person with their choices. Did you help your kids with this? Is that something that you found a way to sort of educate on or pass down so that they would be asking a similar question instead of doing the sort of wander search thing? Yeah, I have an unorthodox approach to what we did with our kids. We discussed this, my wife and I, and I wanted to make sure that in however they were raised, that they retained the curiosity of childhood into adulthood. Okay. Let's say there's a little toddler walking here, okay, crawling on the ground, it comes up and they start grabbing this. What's the first thing to say? No, don't touch that. Okay? This was an experiment waiting to happen that you just squashed. This is a cup, it has water in it. Okay? This is breakable. The kid doesn't know that. They want to experiment. So they'll grab it, they'll, it'll fall, it'll break, water will spill all over. That was an experiment you just prevented. They are experimenting with their environment. Everything is new to them. I saw a woman walking with her kid. The kid has galoshes on and a raincoat on, and they're coming down the walkway. And there's this big, juicy, muddy puddle right there. And I said, please let the kid jump in the puddle. You know the kid wants to jump in the puddle. The kid is like three or four. You know the kid, and what, is the, what does the mother do? She pulls the kid around to prevent that from happening. That's an experiment in cratering. That's what ha craters happen that way. You splash the water, there's mud, it's fun. You get to see the cause and effect of a force, downward force operating on a, on a fluid. Gone. That was a bit of curiosity in that moment that was extinguished. So, with our kids, curiosity provided it does not kill them, if it meant we had extra work in front of us, I would do that extra work. And I have pretty high confidence that they'll retain that curiosity through the turbulent middle school years into high school. And what is a, an adult scientist but a, a kid who's never lost the curiosity? We live in a very fractured world today. But what is clear is that the internet has enabled, and social media have enabled people to tribalize. You might go your whole life without ever finding another person who thinks the earth is flat. You go online and you see them all, and they have conventions, and they, they, and they meet here, even if it's only virtual. So, so you have ways to say why you are different from other people. And I don't know that that's always a healthy place to be in a pluralistic land. You want to celebrate differences rather than go out of your way to establish differences and then claim one group is better than another. You can draw a line in the sand between people who transgress but do not hold power over you from those who transgress and do. So the coach who said catch that, he doesn't have power over Johnny Johnson unless you allow him to. This is a famous quote from Martin Luther King. You can only be ridden if your back is bent. When I grew up, it was very common to hear the phrase, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. You recited this. This is what you told when you came home, when you said, oh, you know, this bully called me a name, or sticks and stones can break my bone, but words will never hurt me. And so this was an inoculation against hate speech, really, against just evil people, just nasty people you were able to develop a, set, a system of defenses against unpleasant people out there. And I haven't heard that phrase in a long time. What I think has happened over the years is we came to learn as a civilization that words can be hurtful. I don't have a problem with that. That's, this is a, an enlightened new place to understand the role of our emotional state and how it interacts with our world around us. That's an advance in 
in mental health. What I see on the flip side of that coin, however, is people are less able to deal with the very same people who are around today who were around back then, who are calling you names, the people who might be um, bullying you on the internet by, by saying things about you. We, I don't know that we have how to defend against that now other than seeing a counselor for your emotional state. I can say from the era in which I grew up, I don't give a rat's ass what you say to me, okay? Um, unless you are between me and some goal, then I ha I'll have to navigate that some way. If there's a racist person or a sexist person or a person with some kind of cultural bias, I want to know that actually. I don't want them to hide that. I want you to say everything you want to say. Then I'll say, okay, that's who you are. That's how you're thinking. So now what do I need to do because you're in my way? Do I dig under you, go around you, leap over you? Or do I go this way and then come out the other side? Yeah, it's longer, it's more effort, it's more energy, but on some level it's sort of same shit, different day. I think we should all get as high grades as you can, but if you don't get the highest grades possible, no one should be standing in judgment of that. If you have some other ambitions that have pathways that don't get encoded in the GPA that other people are referencing. When you approach a topic that you don't know well, how, what is your actual process Thank to you. learn? Great question. I read things that take me to places where other people think. If I'm an educator, I want to know that. Because when you're speaking to me and I have some understanding of you, I, I can navigate your receptors for learning. I don't have to have you come to where I am. That's not right. I'm the educator, not you. You're the curious person. So I'm gonna meet you on your territory. What I do for the public is prime, almost 80 plus percent of it is driven by duty, not by ambition. What gives you the sense of duty? Because I can do something. And if I can do it better than others, and it's for a greater good in society, I would be irresponsible if I did not. If people can get that, I hope to give that to my kids. Like, if you want to be an astronaut, why wouldn't you? If you want to be the president of the United States, why wouldn't you? Like, you can. You just have to figure out what it's going to take to get there and do it. Take a step every day. And so that paradigm was in my brain maybe when I was young. I don't exactly remember. But um, this idea of... of no matter what it is, it may just take time and a particular skill set, but if you want to run a multi-hundred million dollar business, find someone who's doing it and get them to mentor you, or find 10 people that are doing it and learn little things from them, right? It's all there, it's all been done before, right? So that was kind of where my paradigm came around, if you can't, you must. My philosophy is very, very simple when it comes to my family, particularly, you know, me being a dad. If they're hungry, it's because I'm starving. I don't eat until they eat. I'm not comfortable until they're comfortable. I don't have unless they have. That's the mentality, and that's the mentality that I strictly get from my mother. And so for me, you know, having that kind of mentality, well, what comes with that? What comes with that is a certain work ethic that you have to put forth. It's easy to slip back into, you know, well, you know, I'm not gonna push myself because when people blow smoke up your ass constantly, 24-7, 365, it's a good feeling, you know, you know. You know uh, Even now, the most vigilant, high-performance person will be subjected absolutely. to Absolutely. You've seen that. A that's why guys like Gates, the late Steve Jobs, Elon, they don't hang. Eagles fly alone. You know, when it's hard for the birds that are flying at 10,000 feet to blow smoke up your ass when you're at 25,000 feet. People are trying to do the impossible right now. They're trying to save what they make. Dude, it's easier just to make another four grand. There's no shortage of money. There's no shortage of money on this planet. There's plenty of money. You said it. Four trillion dollars has been freaking manufactured. You got to first decide there's no shortage. You know, clear up your thinking about what your daddy thinks a lot of money is. And, and get rid of the thinking that you make enough. You don't. Nobody does. And then start thinking, okay, my first target should be 125. That gets you in the top 5% of all the earners on planet Earth. If you earn 125 grand a year, it's 10,000 bucks a month. Top 5% planet Earth. Planet Earth, bro. You're on, you're, you're on top. You're, you're, you're at the party now. At least you're, you've been invited to the party of prosperity on planet Earth. I'm not talking about money, man. I'm talking about taking care of your kids. 
or you want to send them to school. You're going to have to buy a car. You probably need a house at some point. You need clothes. You got to have food. You're going to have an emergency. Mm -hmm. You need some freaking dough. Yeah. I'm not talking about money, right? So now, if you want to get in the big leagues, now now you got to start thinking about these other numbers: two fifty, four hundred, a million, a million a month. It doesn't take any talent to be a critic. It takes real work to think through an idea and see the world differently from everybody else, articulate it, and then put your reputation on the line and go popularize it. Right? That's work. It's not easy to do, and uh, uh, you have to be willing to be unpopular. I need you to believe. Because I can be up here speaking and up here sweating and up here crying and pouring my heart out to you. But if you have the mindset like nothing is ever going to change. Like some of you, when they was doing that play and they was doing that skip, some of you felt it. Some of you was like, wow, they sharing my story. But there was still a little voice in the back of your mind that said, yeah, but that's not really going to change. Or yeah, it's easier said than done. No, no, no. Listen to me. Hear me loud and clear. Your mindset, your belief system is everything. And it is so powerful. And so I came all the way from Atlanta, Georgia to tell you, you are not a mistake. You are not an accident. You were here for a reason. I know you're going through some hard times. I know life at times might feel rough or you might feel weird or things might be frustrating, but it's not going to always be like this. Your condition is not your conclusion. There is so much more that's going to take place. There is so much more power that's inside you. If you make up in your mind, I choose to believe that I can do great things. And I want you to seriously think about your life. Like think about where you are internally. We have a group of people in here. Some of you, you're, you're, you're struggling yourself. Some of you are just trying to get by. You've got so many pressures on you. You want to make your family proud. You, you know what I'm saying? You want to get good grades. You want to make people proud. But then you also have friends and you want to be cool in their eyes and you want to kind of fit in there. And then some of you are in a really real place. You feel like people don't understand you. You feel like you're having a hard time to connect with people. When you wake up in the morning, you feel like you're in the slumps and you feel tired and drained. Like, I get it. I've got a message for you, right? The people, those of you that's looking for acceptance from others, you're going to have to make up in your mind and say, you know what, whether you accept me or not, I'm amazing, I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I'm talented. Because if not, if you live for their acceptance, you'll die from their rejection. So you got to tell yourself, you know what, I know I'm amazing and I know I'm smart. And those of you that feel like you're in a really weird place, those of you that feel like nobody understands you, those of you that feels like, man, I'm just here, but I'm not having a hard time connecting with people, you lost your zeal. You lost your passion. You know, you feel like, you know, what's the point of living? You feel like you could relate to what they were doing in the skit. Here's my advice to you. Don't keep it to yourself. The worst thing that you can do when you're in that dark place is to just let that thing push you off in the corner. I'm going to challenge you to come to the light and be bold and be brave enough and be vulnerable enough to say, hey, you know what? I need help. I can't do this by myself. And you know why I'm an advocate for that so much? It's because to this day, I'm in my 30s and I still got counselors I meet with. And I still have counselors and therapists that I sit down with. And I have a counselor of people that I can meet with and connect with. Crazy, right? Some people look at me and they see our nonprofit in South Africa. They see how we're feeding and clothing people. They see my family, my wife. They, they see all of that and they're like, oh, Jeremy, your life's just so awesome. And I'm like, you know what? My, you know, life is good, but that don't mean I don't have struggles. That don't mean I don't have doubts. That don't mean that I don't have some insecurities. That doesn't mean that, you know, I don't sometimes question like, man, am I good enough? Sometimes I still hear that voice. Sometimes I go back to like being that little boy in the hallway that ever heard that teacher tell my mom that I wasn't high school material. Then I have to remind myself like, no, 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 that, that, no, that, that's not true. I am that. I can do that. I can achieve that. Sometimes I have to remind myself, what am I telling you? Like life can be hard. Life can be rough, but there's something special. And there's something powerful about the human mind and about the human spirit and about the human will when you tell yourself, I won't give up, I won't surrender, I won't quit. I'm going to show up every single day and do the best that I can. And here's the beautiful thing about you is while you're going through your process and while you're trying to navigate these waters and while you're still, you know, trying to tweak some stuff within yourself, you still got the power to save somebody else's life. You got the power to speak up for others. 
You got the power to be the voice of reason for someone who might be on the verge of doing something they shouldn't do. You have the power of saying, hey, I saw this going on. I know this isn't right. You have the power to put your arm around somebody that might be in a really rough place. You have the power when you see that person sitting by themselves in the cafeteria, you, you slide over by them. Even if they make you feel like you're weird, that's fine because they're going to go home and they're going to think like, wow, somebody actually saw me. Somebody actually sat by me. Like you have the power to compliment someone and say, hey, I like those kicks or I like your hair or I like your style. Like you have the power to brighten somebody's day. Your words are powerful. Your energy is powerful. And so I don't want you all to think that you have to have it all together and everything for you has to be perfect in order for you to be a leader. No, 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 no. You can make an impact. You can make a difference. You can save somebody's life right now by you just being unapologetically you and you walking in that calling and you speak life and you affirm and you let others know I see you and I'm with you and I got your back and you're not by yourself and I will hold your hand as you go throughout this journey and even though I'm struggling I don't mind fighting on behalf of you and we're gonna figure this thing out together and I just sat in meetings all week with really big companies and people and they would say like what does the future look like for you like what is and years ago I would be like oh I don't know you know we'll see we'll see what happens and now I'm like Oprah like if Oprah and Ellen had a baby <laughs> someone who can make you laugh and then also can challenge you to show up for your own life is but I couldn't have claimed that five years ago or ten years ago I would have worried what everyone in this room thought of me because who says that what a douchebag um, but I might still struggle with you know what you think of my hair or my writing style but I certainly don't care what uh, what you think of me for having a dream and I think that it's one of the things that cripples women most is they have this desire on their heart they want to pursue something for themselves and they're too afraid of what other people will think they're too afraid of what like Marissa from eighth grade is gonna think of them for signing up for a half marathon they're too afraid of what their mother-in-law thinks of them for wanting to start a business and they just drown in the shame associated with it and nobody calls it BS nobody says like wait this isn't this, we're all dealing with this and so none of us can step forward into who we're called to be because we're too worried about what you think of us so excuses were really important for me to tackle just because I, I think love my girls but women especially like we need to call BS and you need to have someone get in your face and say like with all the love in my heart this is not this is not real. This is something that you've decided to cling to because it justifies why you're still in the same place. That's why I'm an achiever. Like I had to perform. In my family, nobody paid attention to you unless you were doing something good. So if you got an A on the test, if you scored a goal in the soccer game, then we all clap for you and we love you. And the second that that achievement is done, we're back over here doing our thing. And what that teaches a child is that in order to get love, you better keep achieving. Now, I don't regret that because, gosh, it's manifested into something really powerful as an adult. But um, so he asked that question, who do you have to be? And then he says, and who else did you have to be? And I had never consciously had this thought and it fell out of my mouth, small. So my dad was um, little girl, little girl, you don't know what you're talking about, little girl this, little girl. And he wanted you to be bigger than life when other people were watching, but he also believed that children should be seen and not heard. You Little girl, you better shut your mouth. So how do you carry that? How do you carry, be as big and achieving as you can possibly be and then shut up because nobody wants to hear what you have to say? And I found myself as a grown woman sitting there realizing that this had become my career. So I had, in the dark, like behind the scenes in a way that it wouldn't bother anybody, I'm building and dreaming and an entrepreneur and super proud of what I'm doing. But if you had asked me, what do you do? I'd be like, oh, I have this little blog. And it was at the time, I'm like by myself, it's over six figures. I was really proud of what I would, but I never said that family parties, oh, oh, Rachel, she was a little blogger, she was a little DIY, but I, I wouldn't claim what I was doing because I just thought I've got to be big and I've also got to be small. So understanding why I felt that way and also making the decision as a people pleaser that I would no longer seek love from others in negative ways. And the only way I know how to do that is 
I'm going to be so filled with love myself. I'm going to be so filled with love for my in-laws, for my parents, for, for everybody else, that it doesn't matter if you love me back. I'm going to love you so hard, it doesn't matter if you love me back. Because if I've got enough love for both of us, then I don't need to try and shape myself into someone new in order for you to approve of me. So those are two huge awarenesses that I came to. Many of us right now may be asymptomatic carriers of the virus. In many of us, it may never show any symptom. In some of us, it may show mild symptoms. In some of us, it may show severe symptoms. But in most of us, it may not show any symptom and it may just pass through us. But we could be giving it to somebody else whose life is at risk, somebody else who is far more vulnerable than us. So this is why, this is the time to prove what kind of a human being are you? First of all, are you a human… are you fit to be called a being or are you just a creature? A creature of compulsions or are you a conscious being? If you are a being, the most fundamental thing is you know how to be. If you know how to be, then social interaction is only by choice. If it's not necessary, you can keep yourself to yourself and this is a great time. By not doing anything, you can feel hugely satisfied that you've done something wonderful for the world. How is that? <laughs> Never before you had this opportunity. I've been talking to you for many, many years, but now you have this that by doing nothing, you're doing great service to the world. Serving the nation, serving the people, serving the humanity, just by doing nothing. You will not get another opportunity like this, you must make use of this fully. I've been wanting to put on a depressed face, but uh, my face is not cooperating, I think I'll get it in the next week. <laughs> because you're supposed to become dead serious, if the situation is serious, Situation is serious, let's understand this. Situation is serious, you don't have to become serious. That's what is important. I am not serious. Does it mean to say I'm going to be frivolous? No. I'm just going to be joyful, responsible, sensible. This is what you're going to be. A joyful, sensible, responsible human being can deal with situations much better than those who are dead serious about everything. Especially if you're in panic, you're paralyzed. Panic is paralyzation. You get paralyzed and you think you will handle it better, there is no such thing. It's very important that all your faculties are in place, your body and your brain functions and responds to what is needed the way it needs to, this is most important. So the most important thing is, we are alive, let's put it to good use. So I want everyone, every one of you, in whichever way you can communicate, ensure that everybody maintains physical distance and you should not be the cause of the problem. That much you must take care. Those of you who are always little lazy, that you always cursed about going to work, those of you who are, thank God, it's Friday kind of people, this is your time. At least have a good time for three weeks or four weeks or whatever it turns out to be. So, uh, the most important thing is that people don't become fearful and start doing stupid things. People don't become fearful and start running on the streets. Very important. It is in times like this, when we think we are in a crisis or when we foresee a crisis or there is a possible crisis, it is in these times that what kind of a human being you are matters. It matters all the time, but in normal times, 
all kind of flakes will escape. They can pretend. It is when crisis hits you that what kind of a human being you are becomes the most valuable thing. When you are at the forefront of research and you are grabbing hold of the reins of reality, able to lift a million tons of rock into the sky, which is what an atomic bomb can do, you know, it's intoxicating. And you can easily put aside the ethical ramifications of what you're working on, but ultimately, as a human being, you come back to it. And these individuals, at least a good number of them from the Manhattan Project, did come back to the realization of what their work had wrought on the world. There's no way to stop research. There's no way to stop exploration. That's who we are. That's where we come from. And that's our lifeblood. And it's also the great opportunities that we have for the future. And you can't not pursue those opportunities for fear of the side effects that could be devastating. The universe is just left with a bath of particles floating through the darkness. All structure has disintegrated and there's nothing but particles and the void. There was a time when I would think about the far future and it would feel bleak. It would give me this hollow sense of dread that was unpleasant and uncomfortable. But as I thought about it more and more, I had a radical turn of perspective, which is the recognition that we are small, we are finite, and that can make you feel insignificant. But at the same time, Look at what these collections of particles can do and look at how unlikely it is that these collections of particles exist. You and I are the product of a sequence of quantum events reaching back to the Big Bang, each of which could have turned out differently. That way instead of this, yielding a world in which we would not be here. Fundamentally, as kids, we are scientists. We are curious about the world. Why does a kid smash things together, break things apart to figure out what's inside and how it works? And there's a drive to really engage and understand things deeply. And what happens in the educational system is we kind of stamp out that insight, that curiosity by virtue, I feel, of spending too much time on assessment and testing and quizzes as opposed to the big wondrous ideas. So when an audience member or member of the public has an opportunity to read a book or, or watch a Stephen Colbert where it's focused on big ideas, I think it reignites that childlike instinct to want to know that is inside of all of us. Our brain evolved to survive and it became well equipped at thinking about the world in terms that aided that survival. But the truth of how the world works and the things that you need to have in your brain in order to survive, that's two different things. And therefore, what we have in mind and in our intuitions may not be aligned with the true nature of the world. And that's why it takes dedicated study and exploration to break through these intuitions instilled over a hundred thousand generations or more and catch a glimpse of the real nature of the world. And Einstein, of course, was the genius at this. He would take the things that everybody took for granted and wipe them away, rethink them, resulting in time that elapses at different rates if we're in relative motion, space and time that can warp and curve and in fact meld into each other, creating what you described, the space-time continuum, showing that there's a deep connection between these two ideas that at first sight seem different. You shouldn't put money in a house, you should put money in your brand. You should put money in the marketing. You should promote yourself, not put money in where you and the kids live. Right. Why is that a mistake? Because it's dead money. I mean, it's, it, it, it can't, a house can't make you money. A house does not make you money. The only reason people think a house makes them money is they're comparing it to if I rent, that costs me money. But, you know, if you need to go to a hospital, you don't buy the hospital. You rent a bit to get out of there as fast as you can. If you go on a trip, you go to America and you want to go to Disneyland, you don't buy the hotel, you rent a room. And nobody thinks bad, poorly of that. They're like, yeah, I'm gonna go there, use the place and get out. That's what you should be doing with your living. Find a place where you can rent, pay rent monthly. Don't own the house and take all the money that you would have put in that house purchase, down payment, use all that money to improve your business and yourself so that you can get more money. 
So I see so many people here like, I'm gonna invest 300,000 pounds in a house to hopefully make $30,000. Right. I'm gonna I'm buy it for 300, I'll, maybe I'll sell it for 600,000. I'll double my money. Fixed in one place, by the way, where no money comes to you. Money does not go to homes. Right, and that's big, a big thing on your career is moving locations because people who stay in the same place get too comfortable. If you study wealthy people, they're mercurial. They're moving, they're mobile. Warren Buffett and Bill Gates do not talk about the home they live in. They talk about the places they're going to. They go meet money, they go meet wealth, they go meet connections. Listen to me very closely. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because of the economy. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because of racism. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because it ain't the season. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because they don't love you. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because the opportunity ain't there. The truth of the matter is that you ain't there because you ain't there. Some of you, you know what you want. You know what you want, but you are not personally willing to do the work it takes to get it. What you're trying to do is do what you've done on this level and get the next level. You're trying to do exactly what you're doing on this level. you like, I'm getting up every day. I'm putting in two and a half. I'm putting in three, and I'm not getting the opportunity. The opportunity might require three and a half. I'm lifting weights. I'm eating right, and I'm not getting the opportunity. It might require getting up and working out three and a half. It might require you saying no to your friends. It might require you changing your diet. It might require you moving to another city. Whatever it takes, you gotta be willing to do it. And you keep saying you're not there because of something else because it's easier to blame somebody else. Because now you don't gotta do no work when you blame somebody else. Guess who gotta do the work? They gotta do the work. But guess who got the power? They got the power. So what I'm telling you to do, since you hate being told what to do, you gonna have to fix yourself since you don't like nobody else telling you what to do. If you could fix procrastination, what would your life be like? You, you understand what I'm saying? People like E.T., I want to do what you do. No, you don't. I'm my own boss. When I worked at Michigan State, I had to be to work at 9 o'clock. When I work for myself, I get up at 3. When I worked at Michigan State, I get to leave at 5. When you work for yourself, you don't have no time when you get off. You don't get off. You stop when the work is done. If you work for yourself, you'd be asleep all day. You'd be like, I work for myself, I'm good, I ain't even getting up today. You know what I'm saying? I'm just taking a day off. I'm just being real. There are those of you who work for yourself, you don't even have a plan, you don't even have like a, a vacation package for yourself. You just get to get off whenever you want to. What kind of job is that? You can just take off when you want to? That ain't no real job. You ain't got no insurance. You ain't paying yourself. You ain't, Oh, but when you had a job, you could get there for them when they wanted you to get there. Oh, you had to tell them when you was going to be sick, when you want, but for yourself, you ain't got to do nothing. That's why you can't blow up. You ain't got enough discipline to discipline you. I came today because I care about you. I came today because I love you. You got to make it happen. And it is who you are. It has got to be your focus. Every day, you got to focus on it. I made it to the NBA because I couldn't get it out of my mind. I couldn't get it out of my face. I worked on it every day, all day. I became a motivational speaker. I'm no different than you. I'm not smarter than you. But let me tell you one thing I understand. I had to make it happen. And so can you. Until you become accountable, it's hard for you to move. I need you to own it right now. Because when you raise your hands in victory, I want you to own that too. But right now, we got to make this move. What happened to you just now? I don't want to hear about your challenges. We all got them. I don't want to hear about your limitations. What? We all got them. I don't want to hear about your haters. What? We all got them. In fact, if you don't have haters, your vision is too small. If you don't have haters, you ain't been thinking big enough. Haters are a part of the landscape to make it happen. So can I ask you a question? What are you working on right now? But if you're gonna make it happen, we gotta build it from scratch. All you gotta do is follow the recipe to success. The blueprint has already been set. Life is simple. 
If simple principles are applied, I'm going to say that one more time. Life is simple. If simple principles are applied, and I'm going to break it down even further in just a moment. There's no shortcut to your success. There is absolutely no shortcut to success. An inheritance gained quickly will not be blessed in the end. Ain't no fast money. Ain't no fast success. If it's fast, I want it. If it's quick, run away. Success is like a slow drip. You already know what it takes to be successful. I just need you to believe. I just need you to buy in. I just need you to execute. You learned in the first grade what it took to be successful. You learned in the fifth grade what it took to be successful. You heard it over and over in high school what it took to be successful. The key right now, you need to believe it. Today is the day that you become who you are destined to be. Today is the day that you become the person that people said you would never be. Today is the day that you find your purpose and you start to project yourself forward as you become the person that you were destined to be. Today is the day that come hell or high water, you'll come out swinging because your back is against the wall and you have no other choice but to move forward. You see, I'm telling you that because that was the day that I found my purpose. That was the day that I found my calling. Today is the day that you jump over the hurdle and that you choose to not allow fear to paralyze you. Because now is the time. Now is the opportunity for you to turn your dreams into a reality like never before. Because you can only do this. There isn't anybody else that can do it. You can. But you gotta believe in yourself. Do you have the ability to believe in yourself like never before? Do you have the ability to have the humility that when all the stars and all the things that align in your favor, can you be humble enough to step up to the challenge and not let the screams and the cheers get the best of you? Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because don't let it get to you. Because there's going to be family and friends that are not going to support you. There are going to be family and friends that are going to tell you that you cannot turn your dreams into a reality. There are going to be family and friends that they believe that, listen, if I just hang on your coattail just for enough time, or if I just hang on your coattail long enough, that you will make it. And I can always say that you will do it, but I never believed in you from the beginning. You see, I'm talking to somebody because I got it out the mud and I understand what it feels like. I understand what it feels like to have those people that are two-faced. It. I understand what it feels like to have those people that tell you you can't turn your dreams into a reality. I also understand that you have those people that are rooting for you. And I know that it's far and in between and that you may have more negative people in your ear more than you have the positive people. But I'm standing here to tell you that it gets better. I'm standing here to tell you that you can turn your dreams into a reality. I'm standing here to tell you that you can make it happen. I'm standing here to tell you that you must believe in yourself because how you see yourself is how the world gonna treat you and so if you see yourself as a piece of gum on the bottom of a shoe then you can't complain and get mad when nobody believes in you because see there's somebody right now that's looking for what you have there is somebody right now that is wanting the words of encouragement that you have to say, but because you're too scared to speak life into that person, they'll never get it. You see, I had to understand that in order for me to go to another level in life, in order for me to do what I'm doing now, I had to believe in myself. I had to believe in myself. I had to stay consistent. I had to block out the noise. I had to block out the people that hated on me. I had to block out the people that always had something negative to say. So what am I challenging you with right now? I'm challenging you with to believe in yourself. I'm challenging you with staying consistent. And last but not least, I'm challenging you to fight it out no matter what. Why be normal when you can be extraordinary? 
it's time for you to recognize the person that you are being is not the person that you have to be it's time for you to be more motivated than you've ever been in your entire life rather than settling for what you have chances are you didn't wake up one day and think i just want to be a mediocre person i want to be like everybody else no you had a burning desire to learn to grow and evolve the problem is that you settled into a world that said it's okay to be comfortable it's okay to stay where you are but the fact is if you're staying where you are you're going backwards you see to be motivated means to move through things the word motivation comes from the latin of motive what is your motive for doing what you're doing let's be honest you have goals you have dreams you have ambitions we all do we are what the greeks called teleological we are goal centered creatures we need targets things to aim for but most of us are just settling for things that don't give us the greatest joy the fact is we are all here to grow to evolve and to contribute jim rohn famously said that the difference between us and all of the other animals on the planet is that we have the dignity of choice a tree doesn't think to itself well you know what i've had enough of growing i'm just going to stay here no it does what it is meant to do every living soul every living cell lives for one reason it lives to grow to express itself fully every day when we're not allowing ourselves to be who we are truly capable of being there is a part of us that is dying the question i want to ask you right now is who do you want to become if you don't seize the moment the moment will find someone else who will i didn't come to just motivate you i came to transform your life pursue the fire embrace the new Stay in truth in all that you do. Breathe the real. You are enough. No judgment at all. Just radiate love. The world is yours. That desire for more. As the sweat pours, I say it again. The world is yours. There ain't no slacking up. Cause the words are only good as the actions that are backing them up. Greatness. You are able. But you gotta stop giving average a seat at the table. Lottery pick. One and done. You can even look up at the stars or you can become one by gift to you a brand new attitude complacency is just as dangerous as ingratitude now don't get me wrong i won't judge you but i will call you out and demand from you that greatness inside of you to conquer the highest levels of life one must not only get used to pain but become immune to it champion stare at the things that make them uncomfortable until uncomfortable bows to them most people love the idea of being successful they just don't love it enough to actually do the things that it takes to make it happen actions are the credit line that allows spoken words to purchase the dream it's not all about this token you got to move from talking to doing if you don't seize the moment the moment will find someone else who will the way you speak the way you act the way you carry yourself teaches the world how to approach you just because you've done something or been a certain way all your life doesn't mean that's the real you that's just the version that you've accepted and consistently acknowledged your dreams are constantly seeking the ground to build themselves upon and that foundation is your faith to step fully into greatness you have to awaken to the fact that you are already that which you seek if you don't seize the moment The moment will find someone else who will. The masses only see opportunities on Black Friday. Successful people train their mind to see opportunities every day. I say it again. The world is yours. Discipline is sexy. Grind is cologne. Sweat is lingerie. Work is seductive. How attractive are you based on that standard? I'm about to give you the million dollar lottery ticket right here. But the question is, will you cash it in? 
If you want to be successful at the highest levels, you got to stop chasing the trends, seeking followers, and getting your word from social media likes. Just be yourself. Set yourself on fire with passion, and the world will come to you. See, people who are real, authentic, and willing to be vulnerable on a big stage are rare. This is the ticket. You got to stand in the center of truth and refuse to move from it. Don't budge. Trust the process and let the world come to you. Everybody's seeking truth. Once you wrap yourself in it, the whole world is yours. I say it again, the whole world is yours. Truth is the control for greatness. You can either serve tomorrow or you can make tomorrow serve you. You can either look up and admire the stars or you can become one. The world is yours. Bold, seeking real, raw, expressing how you feel, mentally vulnerable. Emotionally naked, unstoppable, seizing the blessing. The art of greatness, paint my stroll. Get back up, champion, and reload. Explode with awareness of who you are. A product of God, a shining star. Alive. I say, champion, stand for die. A warrior's heart designed to survive. Explode with awareness of who you are. A product of God, a shining star. Truth is the couture for greatness. No more excuses. The world is yours. Pursue the fire. Embrace the new. Say your truth and all that you do. Breathe the real. You are enough. No judgment at all. Just radiate love. Pursue the fire. Embrace the new. Say your truth and all that you do. Breathe the real. You are enough. No judgment at all. Just radiate love. Rise, champion. The world is yours. This is Billy Owls Brooks, and I am blessed and unstoppable. We all got a responsibility. We all got to be accountable. We all got to put in work. Let's talk a little bit about what you've been through. You had to experience some things that you did not understand. You had to experience some greatness. You had to experience some weaknesses. You had to experience things that no one could understand. But you are the one that has to be the one responsible to go through it. You were put on your back and you probably thought that you didn't have the ability to come back. But you did. There were good times and there were bad times. But yet, you are still here. You made it this far because something kept you going. Something kept you believing. Something helped you to understand that the fight was not over yet. And greater opportunities will be waiting for you. There are going to be so many different things that you will embark on. There are going to be so many different things that's going to try to slow you down. There are going to be so many different challenges that you must face. But instead of running away from the challenge, run towards the challenge. For this is your life that you are fighting for. This is your life that you are living for. And make no mistake, no one is going to do you better than you. Don't wait for something to happen. You make it happen. It is time to rise and grind. It is time to be about your business. It is time to make certain sacrifices that many people will not make. You have to understand that this is a possibility that is waiting for you. You are the chosen one. You are the one that is willing to go up and beyond the limit that other people are not ready to go. You have to already be set and ready to start up show up and show out and do what is necessary to get to the level and go beyond it how much are you really willing to give are you prepared to hurt are you prepared to struggle because if you're not that person then lay back down stay where you are don't move forward move backwards if you're not willing to work if you're not willing to sacrifice if you're not willing to hurt if you're not willing to bleed if you're not willing to struggle then you are not going to get what you want. Yes, it hurts sometimes when you feel alone. It hurts sometimes when you're in that dark place and you feel no one cares about you. The first thing you got to realize is that you got to love yourself. It's about self-love. Start understanding that if you're going to do something with your life, you got to fall in love with yourself again. 
do something that's going to make you a better person. Make an impact in this world. You can't wait for somebody else to make your life better. You got to make your life better. You got to focus on you. Now, I'm not saying forget the rest of the people. Help someone. Lift someone up when they're down. Be the strength for others when they're weak. And maybe when you're at the weakest point in your life, someone will lift you up. Because we all struggle. Life has a gift of giving, a gift of receiving. And whether if it's good or bad, you got to make sure you understand that these circumstances and these challenges has to happen in your life. But you got the right to celebrate because no matter if it's good or if it's bad, nothing is greater than living. Because if you're living, there's a possibility to change something. But not just change it, evolve it. Evolve it to something greater. You make it happen for a reason. And take full responsibility and control of this thing we call life.